Joining us now to further the conversation on Tinubu's victory is Chinenye Mba Uzoku. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning and thank you for having me. Well, good morning, Chinenye. The big issue in this uh, <clears throat> election so far has been what INEC described as technical glitches and the inability of the uh, polling uh, officers to transmit onto the IREV portal that INEC talked about from Beavers to IREV. Now, as someone in the tech space who deals with data, what do you think will have happened? Because INEC is here to give us a proper explanation of what the glitches you know, are all about. Beyond saying, oh, it's big election. We used Beavers during off cycle election, but this bigger election, uh, everything failed. What exactly failed? Is it competence or infrastructure? If you could just take us through, you know, uh, why there was no auto scaling, why the servers, everything just collapsed. With NCC saying that there was no network problem. Um, thank you, Ruben. Um, I would say that, that there are, are well, the first thing is that an election is actually about the chain of trust. You know, Nigerians as citizens have to express themselves through the ballot. In order to express themselves properly through the ballot, what they have to do is to engage in a process that has to be guaranteed by the people and the institutions that actually run them. In this case, uh, INEC, uh, to be clear. And so uh, we can speculate about what went wrong. I think until we find out from INEC exactly what happened to their infrastructure, it's all in the realm of speculation. But let, let me take you through what one would expect um, uh, what do you call it, the, this technology to actually deliver. I think there are three things that, 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 it, that in simple terms, there are probably three things that the BVAS needed to do. Um, and I'll use my own terms. The first thing it needed to do was accreditation. The second thing it needed to do was to document the, uh, the outcome of the polls. And the third, of course, was to transmit the, the, out, those, uh, the documentation that it has gathered to the IRF portal so that Nigerians would feel across these three steps that there was, um, there was transparency, there was accountability, and there was integrity in the process itself. I think we should be clear that um, INEC and uh, BVAS actually succeeded with the first part, which is the accreditation. I haven't heard too many reports, unlike in the past, where people failed at the point of accreditation. Um, I voted, and when I voted, I was very, it was quite easy for me to be accredited. I mean, I gave them my card, they took the photograph, they, they checked my, um, they did the biometric um, uh, facial recognition, and then I went to go and vote. Now, what I think is where the, um, so this one is, you can say we scored you know, close to 100%. The bigger challenge, I think, is around the other two steps, which is, you know, did we actually document the election? Now, it's important to remember, there's a lot of discussion around this, but I don't think that people, the general public, may have the, the um, understanding, the clear understanding, that by documenting it, uh, what we said, transmit results, according to the, I think that's exactly what it says inside the law, um, what the BVAS was actually going to do was to take a photograph, which is an image of the results that were recorded manually on the form EC8A. That image is just exactly that. It's an image, it's a photograph. Just like if you take a photograph with your, with your camera, uh, Ruben, there's no way you can read data from it except that you are interpreting what you see. Um, that data, so when you transmit that image, it doesn't automatically update the IREF portal. It doesn't automatically update any, any database. Somebody has to look at that image and then pull out the figures. But that isn't what is happening. So at that first point, we, can, we must understand that the BVAS was not transmitting data in the sense of the results of the election by way of numbers. And I'll come back to the an to answer that because a very quick fix to that. The third piece is around the transmission. Now, of course, the BVAS has an offline mode and an online mode. And in that respect, it actually was supposed to be able to record whatever it has captured, which should have been on the BVAS. My understanding is that the BVAS is the control and is actually the reference document. What we saw was that the paper uh, record was actually the point of reference, because that's what was taken to the collision centers. And in the collision centers, numbers were being manually added up based on pieces of paper and not referencing the BVAS. So it seems to me that in the process that we've just described, that the BVAS is kept in case of disputes and not actually for the purpose of, of actually tallying the results of the elections. And if I may, I, don't, I want to just quickly make this point that the BVAS is a device. It's the software that runs on top of it that's important. And this software that runs on top of the BVAS is something that can easily be updated. I think that we missed out on something in terms of the BVAS, and, it's, and I'll explain that very quickly. Assuming 
the beavers itself, at the end of the voting at the polling booth, at the PUs, the results were tallied through the counting and actually entered as numbers inside the beavers. In which case, I mean, we all go to supermarkets, we buy things online, we get receipts, we get these numbers, we get these things punched into them. I believe that we should have, if we were not able to vote electronically by way of choosing the candidates, the minimum that the beavers should do is to open up a form that gives you where all the parties are per election, and those numbers should have been entered by the INEC officials inside the beavers, the actual numbers inside the beavers, and that is what would have been transmitted. In that case, we can then say that the data, meaning the results, were actually um, transmitted and not the image of the results. I hope that clarifies. I can, yeah, that, that, that. I'm trying to put it as simply as I can, and I hope that, that, that helps us get a better understanding. So maybe we, we can discuss that a bit more. I'll stop there. That, Thank you. That certainly gives a clearer picture. For a number of people, and, and I'm so glad you brought this angle to the conversation, when Beavers was said to be the game changer and, and results were going to be electronically transmitted, what a number of software developers like yourself, or like, you know, like the people that you represented, I thought would be that it was, electronic, it was going to be electronical from start to finish, whereby results are imputed into a device and that is then transmitted so that it reduces the risk of manipulation. But that's, what, that's not what we had. However, I still want to draw out a bit from the question that was just asked from you, because the big thing here is the statement made by the um, National Commissioner, INEC Commissioner for Voter Education, Mr. Festo Sokoye, who said in a statement, talked about the technical glitches. Because across the, um, the nation on the 25th of February, results were not able to be transmitted at the collation, at the um, polling units due to what, you know, um, network being down, according to what they said. Well, it wasn't with network because we use um, network from different providers and they seem to be working on other devices except for Beavers. So there must have been something that went wrong. Now, from your expert perspective, what are, I'm not saying that's what went wrong, but at least for us to begin to postulate and, you know, prefer reasons why this issue must have happened. What could potentially go wrong in a situation like this, using a device like Beavers with the configuration as it currently stands? What are some of the challenges? What are potential challenges? Okay, I, I believe the, yeah, right. So it's a good question. I think, I think without having the specifications of the device itself. It appears to be an Android device, which is a standard type of tablet that all of us you know, generally have in our homes. It may have been um, um, enhanced in certain ways, but fundamentally it does the same thing as a phone in your hand. And so it's a good question. Why is it that we had challenges in terms of, 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 of working with that? Well, pre periodically, we all have challenges with network, don't we? Sometimes when you write an email off of your phone or your device, you don't, you're not able to send it sent later. Um, sometimes when you want to connect your website, you don't get that happening. So I, I think from, from, from the perspective of what happened with the beavers in different locations, there must have been, um, I could say generically say that, that, that across board, there must have been cases where there would have been challenges in terms of, of the device itself making the connection. Um, you can be in a, an environment, as we all know, where you have three, four phones, and I'm trying to call you right next to me and it's not working. So that is, that is something that, that is there. But my point really around all this is that the connectivity side of it should not be the issue because INEC had actually provided for the connectivity issue by way of enabling that device take a record of the event, a record of the, of the voting offline and then subsequently transmits. So the key question is less about did it work in terms of transmitting immediately or is it more important that we can, wherever that device is, you can open up that device and see the actual results of the election? I think in the transmission thing, we should, we should assume okay. that the connectivity will not be 100% and therefore there will be failure in certain places. Um, the other thing that is important is the way that, you know, in, 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 on devices, you have what we call random access memory and read-only memory. What that means is that when you commit something to read-only, it cannot be edited by anyone. It's locked into the device. And so the results or whatever it was that Bivas was capturing, in this case, an image of the results, is locked into a read-only uh, memory, which is not accessible to anyone except the, the, uh, the device, uh, the device the people who have um, administrative access to the device itself. Okay. So the devices, were they capable of capturing the information? Yes. The key question is, what did they capture? Okay. We have seen situations of, 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 of images of human beings. We've seen images of, uh, of results coming from different parts of the country, okay. going to the wrong section. I'm just saying, 
if you had put in the numbers as they were captured by the citizens, and I must congratulate Nigerians for coming out you know, in response okay. and trusting the system. Okay. I think if the system failed Nigerians, it's a big question for us okay. to answer. I, so, I, so just to dial back, and I, just to challenge some of your positions, I think we're missing the point here, honestly, in this argument. And I'll tell you how we're missing the point. It is about the integrity okay. of the system and concerning the transmission, right. the feedback from site was that they had to send to a temporary offline portal, which was not supposed to be the case. And it was after complaints that INEX said they were having a glitch. They didn't put forward a complaint at first. The question is, why wasn't it transmitted? Even the places where these voters were arguing that please transmit by result, the electoral officers had to tell them a lie that they had transmitted it. But what they did was to put in the offline portal just to shush them off their backs. Then they went to the collation center and results were changed. And it was after they had arrived, the collation center transmission was done. And secondly, to your viewpoint, sir, where you talked about, oh, why can't we put a spreadsheet on the system? It is almost impossible in a country where people are largely illiterate. Because if you are to fill an online form, that's even subject to mistake by the person filling them. Also, how do you authenticate signing by the various party agents? And how do you put that out publicly in a country that is largely illiterate? Those are the other factors on ground. So I think the point we should speak to okay. is the fact that transmission okay. was not done at the polling unit. Yep. It was done after the collation center. And that was when all of a sudden the network started going. Yes. I think I th um, well, Rufa, if I may, I, I think you're, you're actually saying the same thing. You see, if, if you transmit an image of a result, you're still going to manually collate it. Somebody's mm -hmm. going to have to read that image or read that physical paper and start manually entering the numbers inside the system, which again introduces a point of failure and possible error and possible, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, misuse of the system itself. My point around the form, and I, I actually challenge you regarding this form, um, these the people, the INEC officials, are people who obviously do um, online banking. They have mobile apps. They go onto forms online all the time. Entering numbers. I didn't talk about a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet is a complex way of solving that problem. You don't need a spreadsheet. You just need a form with fields, and you enter the numbers there. Once you, so you sign, once you put in those numbers, the beavers could have been shown to the party agents. They would have accepted. They would have pressed submit. Once they hit that submit, in the same way that when you want to send money to anybody through your app, it will challenge you, first of all, and say, confirm this transfer, and you click transfer. I don't think that the people that I saw in, in the, I forget the electorate and the level of the literacy, I think the people that INEC um, had as field staff were fully competent to actually use those kind of applications, a simple application. And this is what was missing. To your point around the transmission and the collation, you see, I think that when we talk about the chain of thrust and integrity of that system, the more you eliminate human, the, po the points of human intervention, the stronger that system itself becomes. That's what we assume in technology. You try as much as possible to pass the responsibility for the integrity onto the system itself and to lock it in. What happens at the collation center, and I think we saw many of those videos, where people sitting down with sheets of paper and a bottle of, and a, and a, and a tipex able to alter results or alter computations, whether they were doing so intentionally to rig the election or doing so because the numbers were wrongly computed by human beings. I mean, in my polling unit, you had an INEC official using a, a feature phone and rapidly adding numbers and seeing that the number was not coming clear and then going back to go and tipex, tipex out what had been entered earlier to try mm. to balance those things. This is not necessary. And this is what technology can do for you. It, it, it's almost 100% of the time if you, if you press your calculator and you add one plus one, it's going to give you two. As soon as you have a human being, you're asking that person, what is one plus one? You introduce a margin of error. And I think that's the point that I'm trying to make, that if we want to strengthen this system, and the question can be asked and should be asked, why weren't these simple things done? When they're eminently possible mm. and they're uh, already in use in other parts, right. of the, uh, parts of the country, and they were not used. Thank, thank and so, so yes, they, they created the opportunity for this, for this thing to happen. And it's a bit of a pity because Nigerians trusted the system and came out in full to vote. I think that the institutions needed to res be respectful of the citizens thank you and so give much. them the best possible use of the technology. Unfortunately, we did not succeed in doing so. Thank you so much. And I think it's also in comments on that next. It lets us see a log of what really transpired that day. I mean, tech doesn't lie.